Are you a GEPF member feeling frustrated by how GEPF is managing your pension? Do you find yourself questioning how they are investing your money? Why can't your kids benefit when you pass away? Or whether the fund could run out because of fraud and corruption allegations? Hi, I'm Devon Laika, a certified financial planner and retire versus resign specialist. Now, day in and day out, I meet with GEPF members who are not only concerned, but downright frustrated. The complaints are endless, not just about GEPF, but about SARS and financial advisors as well. Now, members often ask me, how can GEPF invest in this way? Why is SARS still after me when I retire or resign? And did my financial advisor even care about me, or was he just after his commissions? Now, these questions can haunt you, especially when it feels like everyone is controlling your hard-earned money. And here's the hard truth. When you start complaining, you lose your power. You're wasting precious time and energy that you could be using in creating a solution. So let me ask you this. What if you could turn this around? What if instead of them controlling your money, you took control? Now, if you are tired of complaining or feel that no one's listening, you're going to love today's video because I'm going to share with you three secret tips that will empower you to take immediate action right now and to take control. Let's get started. Now, the first thing that I want you to be aware of as I head over to the iPad is you have to understand GEPF, right? And I'm going to say this, and please don't turn the video off. I want you to watch the video till the end. You have to know that GEPF is going to do everything in its power to protect itself. And this is important. This is very, very important, right? The fund has to make sure that the fund can be sustained. It has to make sure that it does not run out. This is important because there's a lot of members that are within GEPF and a lot of members are being sustained by it, right? A lot of pensions. So because the fund is designed to do this, it's designed to protect itself. It's designed to make sure it's sustained and does not run out. It then means that there could be an issue, right? In terms of what you want and what the fund wants. Because on this end, you might be focused on yourself, which is perfect, right? And you'll know the things that are important to you. Whereas on the other side, the fund is going to focus on itself. So the fund is going to focus on itself and do everything in its power to make sure that it's sustainable. It can deliver on the outcomes. And sometimes that means making certain decisions. For example, we know that November 2022 or 26th of October 2022, GEPF made a change in the formula. And when they changed the formula that adjusted resignation values across the board for members. In some cases, members lost over a million rand. Now, an attempt like that, or when GEPF is doing something like that, they're doing it to protect the fund. Because again, they want to make sure that the fund is sustainable and it does not run out. Now, it doesn't bode well, I understand you, from an investment perspective. Because if, invest, if GEPF is investing the money and you see that the money is constantly reducing because a lot of allegations around where the money is going uh, is invested. Why is it taking so long for GEPF to turn things around if they know it's a bad investment? A lot of concerns around fraud. Now, if you have all those things inside there, naturally that could eventually result in more formula changes, right? Because again, the fund now, if it's losing money, it has to look at ways in which it can protect itself. And I'm still saying that's a good thing because you've got to bear in mind, aside from you, there's so many other members who are depending on the GEPF value, right, on that fund. So what's the first tip that I want to share with you? The first tip is right here. Now that you know that the fund is designed to focus on itself, you need to focus on yourself. That's the tip. So your tip is you focus on you. And what I want you to do, and I've done this with so many different members, right? So I want you to take the time out to make sure that you're doing this for yourself because the results will be phenomenal when you get it right. The first tip here is I want you to start making notes on things that are important to you. So I'm writing this in short form, but now you know important to you. So list out the things that are important to you and take some time out. Take five minutes out, 10 minutes out, 15 minutes. This is important because it's something that you're going to keep with for the rest of your life. Right? So you know that the fund's looking out for itself. You look at what's important for you. Is it important for you to earn an income for life? Right? So you make a note. Is it important for you to pay the least in tax? You make a note. Is it important for you that your money is invested in a place that's secure? You make a note for that. Is it important for you that you have a legacy? 
Is it important for you to have control over your money? See, when you start to take the time out, you become clear on what you want because ultimately you'll be faced with that decision on whether to retire or resign, which, which I'll cover again on the third tip that I want to share with. So the first thing that I want you to be mindful of, just to recap, remember, and you have to know this, right? In as much as it might, might be frustrating to you, but you don't want to waste time complaining. You have to know and understand and appreciate and very importantly, accept that GEPF is going to do what it needs to do in order to protect itself. Right? On your end, you have to make sure that you are protecting yourself. And the way I'm suggesting you to do this is exactly how I've helped other members to do it. Take the time out, make a list of what's important to you. And let's head over to tip number two. And tip number two is an interesting one because I'm not just going to tell you to stop complaining about GEPF because that's not going to solve the problem, right? What I want you to focus on is this, on this tip, right? What can you do now? Right? So it's not just going to help if you're complaining about GEPF or even if you stop complaining about GEPF, right? I want you to start to look at what can you do right now? Now, I'm going to be direct here. A lot of members are caught in that trap of complaining about GEPF. And when I ask them, what are you doing about it? the conversation ends because they're not doing anything about it. So I'm going to share with you what you can do. And again, leave this in your power, right? Because you now need to know that GEPF is going to focus on themselves. If you're not focusing on yourself, then you're going to be left behind. I also want to then do a quick check in with you on the SARS tax guide. Now I'm showing you a tax guide that was the latest when I had produced this video. Make sure you're working with the latest tax guide when you are working with your decision on whether to retire or resign. So you see here, I have the budget guide, 2023 tax guide. And notice inside this, all the information is given up front to you, which means SARS is telling you how they're going to tax you. It's nothing new. They're giving you the information. So for example, if it comes to your gratuity or your one third, if you are resigning, you can see this is the tax table that SARS is using. They're telling you how the tax is going to operate. They're telling you that it's on a sliding scale. The more you take out, the more tax you're going to pay, which means if GEPF is giving you the rules, if SARS is giving you the rules, in a way, they're saying to you, hey, the stove is hot. And if you're going to put your hand onto the stove, you're going to get burnt. So it's not that they're not making you aware. I understand the information might be complicated for you and you might understand know how to apply but this is where again you need to get advice or continue watching the videos or reach out to book a private consult but know that this information is there they're telling you what's going to happen it's left to you to decide on what you can do right now so i'm going to share with you something that you can do straight away i want you to start to have a look at how much of tax you're paying right now so look at what's happening from a tax perspective at this moment Maybe you haven't yet gotten to the stage where you retired or resigned, but start to have a look at how much of tax you're paying right now. Let's just say, for example, you are paying 10,000 rand a month. Actually, I want you to write it down, okay? So instead of me giving you an example, write down for me your monthly tax. Write down how much you are paying monthly in tax. And then I want you to take that figure multiplied by 12 because that gives you an idea for, it, for what's happening in the year. And then I want you to write below that what's happening from a refund perspective, right? So for example, you might be paying 100,000 to SARS over a 12 month period and your refund might be 1,000. So if your refund is very little, the question I wanna ask you is, what can you do now to ensure that you pick up the refund? What can you do now to ensure that you are paying less to SARS? Because this decision doesn't impact you on whether you retire or resign. Irrespective of whether you retire or resign, it would be beneficial for you to save on tax. Would you agree? So this is something that you can do right now. And when you start to do this, you start to open your mind to the possibilities of saving on tax. The same I want to share with you from an investment perspective. If right now you have money invested in a retirement annuity or in unit trust or bank product, wherever it's invested and it's not performing well, what can you do now? What can you do now? So have a look at that investment, start to analyze where can money be invested? How can you get this done better so that you start to have a more improved performance on the investment? These are things that are within your control, right? Because you cannot control GEPF, you're just one individual. And as a group collectively, yes, everyone can get together. But sometimes, you know, that may take long. And the same applies with SARS. It may take long before they make a change. 
So you want to start to look at what you can do now. And the third thing that you can do, the third tip that I want to share with you, is exactly what you're doing right now. So well done. And you've made it to the end of this video. I want you to spend time researching because the biggest problem that I see amongst GEPF members is just ignorance. Members are not aware of information. They're not aware on what happens from a resignation perspective, right? A lot of members are afraid that they're going to lose money in the markets. A lot of members are afraid that they're going to lose money in tax, that they're going to pay high fees. See, I'm not saying that you're going to look at resigning. What I'm say, suggesting to you is at some point in time, you're going to have to make this call on whether you should retire or resign. And if you do not have enough information, if you have not researched properly, then it's difficult to make an informed decision. And you're making a decision that you're going to be stuck with for the rest of your life. So start with your research now. The reason I created the YouTube channel is to provide free information to every single government employee so that no one has this no one can complain basically to say that they don't have access to that information. As I shared in previous videos, my dad didn't have access to this and I wanna make sure that it's available to as many people as possible. So YouTube is free, it just demands a bit of your time. Click on the YouTube videos, watch what's in there. If there's something that's missing, you can always reach out to me in the YouTube, type in a comment, tell me that you need some assistance and I'm, I'll look into it and if possible, I'll create a video for you. Alternatively, you can set up a private consult. So if we're connecting on a private basis, YouTube is very general. I don't know your situation, but on a private uh, capacity, I can take the time to understand what you're trying to achieve and then create something specifically to you. So I hope the video has been helpful for you. Please, I want to make sure that you stop complaining. You're going to follow these three tips because if you do, you're putting yourself in a better position. It does not matter whether you retire or resign. If you follow the tips and you're looking at how you can take control of your money, either route is going to work out better for you. So post a comment below. Let me know which of these tips have been very helpful to you. If you've not already subscribed, I encourage you to do so. And make sure you send this video out to a friend or colleague. Or next time you hear someone complaining, pass this video on to them and let's start to empower them. I'll see you in the next video.